Do you ever miss deliveries? You're out for a jog or maybe a nice bike ride, or you took the family boating out on the river. You come back and find a sorry we missed you label on the door. Man, I've been waiting for this for ages. This shouldn't really be a problem for me because I spent almost all my waking life in this room just a few feet from the front door. I mean, it's right there, but I still can't hear people knocking half the time. This weekend, it's time to fix that. There are a handful of HomeKit compatible doorbells on the market already. None of them are battery powered though, so I'd still have to run a wire, and I don't really need the video functionality anyway. The prices start around 200 bucks, so I should save $150 or so going the DIY route. There are only a few basic parts for this project. Obviously, every doorbell needs a button. This one will do for now, it's nice and clicky, but I've got a cooler permanent one coming tomorrow. The other main piece is a brain. I'm using a tiny Pico dev board, which is based on the ESP32 microprocessor. The ESP32 has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a dual core 240 megahertz processor. It's a pretty great little computer. Finally, I need a couple wires to connect the button to the brain. I'll be using ethernet cable for the installation, but these jumpers will work great for testing. The button has screw terminals, so all I have to do is solder some header onto the tiny Pico. I'll get this assembled and start testing. Everything's assembled now, and I wrote a simple HomeKit accessory script using the HomeSpan open source library. It just exposes a doorbell accessory to HomeKit, so let's try setting it up. I've grabbed a HomePod from the other room to help with testing. I'll be using my phone to connect this to HomeKit. First, I'll open the Home app. From there, I'll go to the plus button and tap Add Accessory. Then I'll have to tap More Options and tap on the doorbell. And this is not an actual HomeKit accessory, so I need to accept that it's uncertified and then enter the setup code that I specified during the HomeSpan setup. I'll just tap continue and it'll go ahead and connect. And then you just go through the rest of the setup process as normal. And you can see there that it allowed me to select to chime my HomePods when somebody presses the doorbell. So it's connected now and let's give it a press. Nice, seems to be working. Now, unfortunately, I know for a fact this won't properly reconnect to HomeKit if I reboot it. What, you didn't think I was trying this for the first time on camera, did you? I opened an issue in GitHub and had some back and forth with the maintainer. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get to a proper resolution, even testing with other boards. However, I discovered just leaving the accessories unplugged for about five minutes gets around the issue. I can live with that for now. It's about a week later and the final doorbell parts have arrived. Everything seems to be working pretty well in this new prototype circuit. I switched from the Tiny Pico to a no-name ESP32 dev board. It's about a third of the price, and size isn't really a concern for this project. It connects to the button over this 25-foot UV-resistant Ethernet cable, which also sends power to illuminate the button. Uh, these buttons came with a bunch of plastic inserts, but they were all car-themed, so I printed a two-tone bell insert, which I think works pretty well. I also designed the mount that's actually going to go on our door frame. So this is a two-piece design. You can see there's a mounting plate and then the actual case. If I turn the case off here, uh, you can see Here's where the mounting plate gets actually screwed into the door frame. And then there's a cleat kind of system here where the actual case, let me turn on a cross section, uh, the actual case fits on with these 45 degree angles. So hopefully these, these allow it to mount, but they'll also, also keep water out away from the circuit board, which mounts to this side of the case. Um, then the ethernet port comes out here and goes into kind of this, this little chamber here. So that, that's just a visual, uh, oops. I think it'll be waterproof. Um, there's no way for me to really test that though until it's out there for a while. I'm pretty happy with how this print came out. Tree supports are really nice here for avoiding the standoffs. I'm curious how difficult they'll be to remove. Those came out way easier and cleaner than normal supports. Now I'm gonna do some sanding and priming on the case. I did four or five coats of primer and two matte clear coats. It's not perfect, but this should match pretty nicely with the front of our house now. I also printed this simple case to hold the doorbell brain. The next step is moving these circuits into perf board and installing them in the cases. It's the next day and I'm very ready to get this installed. The brain is gonna live in the sunroom and then the ethernet cable will run along the wall and outside to the button. 
Uh, I'm gonna mount the outside part first. I've got the outdoor part mounted now. Uh, it's just sitting on there at the moment. It's this, the cleat I mentioned earlier. So this little 45 degree piece sits on there and the whole thing just kind of slides on top. And then I've got some bolts that I'm gonna put up that'll secure it uh, through this hole down at the bottom. I think the only thing left now is running and securing the cable. Then I can test it. Well, the brain is all connected and wired up to the doorbell. So hopefully this works. There's only one way to know for sure. Can you ring the doorbell so I can finish making this video? Nice. Thanks for watching.